I don't care how much it costs the America because, you know, these people that are saying this, that they don't care because they're getting rich. You know, Halliburton and the Carlisle Group and these private prisons, and you know, they, they make these big, huge decisions with our money, and, you know, it's all lost for us, you know, but it's all gain for them. They don't care. I, I agree. We're enslaved. And, you know, I, I just went from a, a, a tax bracket. I'm in the middle class, so I went from a tax bracket for just making a few thousand dollars. I went from a 15% tax bracket a year to a 25% tax bracket a year. So for making a, a couple of thousand dollars extra, I'm actually going backwards and take home about $9,000. So I'm losing money just because I'm in the middle class. The, the class below me only got a 5% hike in, in one class to the next. And then the class above where I'm at goes from uh, a 10% increase where, where I just went to a 3% increase for people that make over 134000 a year. And then after that, it's another 3% increase for people that make up to 400000 a year. So why is it that the middle class gets a 10% jump right there where they're struggling just to get over that hump, just to barely survive a little bit better, and then they get that 10% hike? It's slavery. I, I agree. You're, you and I are on the same page there, Clayton. It is slavery. They, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, up on one of my guests uh, the the other day, the the lawyer. Yeah, let me take a look. He's, he's got run about slavery, and and they all they've done is expand the farm, and you are the farm animals. As long as you're happy and and pretty well fed, and you got your uh, television and your beer in your hand, you know, and you yep. pay your taxes, yep. and everything's okay. No, I agree. You know, it's a convenience store society. That's what I say. It's, you know, everybody takes the, the easy way out. They don't, you know, they don't necessarily fight for their rights. So the government harvests from us because we're so easily amused. You know, we got our beer, we got our football, everything's peachy, you know, and, and then they just take advantage of us. I, I, I'm not a slave. I'm not a slave. I go out and get my pickup and get a beer go get a beer. I watch you. Watch. See, I'm not a slave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Uh, and the Brian, Brian, yeah. excuse yeah. me one second, guys. If I could ask Brian to get uh, back onto a little bit, you know, we can all get a little negative about the problems in America, and I couldn't agree more. But in the name of Roger, say something positive spiritually about how we're transforming with cannabis and creating the enlightenment and, and the, you know, sending out a positive light, Ryan. Uh, I'll try my best, you know, and, and I, I have to say I have been affected. I, I do feel that negative spirit sometimes, and, you know, Lord help me that I can be positive and, and, and still fight this battle, knowing all the pain that people are suffering. I have three of my best friends currently right now, and I'm sorry to keep going on the negative, but, uh, you know, three friends currently that I grew up with in school right now presently in jail for misdemeanor crimes. Uh, victimless crimes, and I just sent them money on their books two days ago and made sure that, you know, they're as comfortable as they can be without, you know, really, uh, you know, breaking the bank for my kids on Christmas, but, you know, I, I, I feel affected, and I, I'm sorry about the negativity because this is really, uh, you know, about um, healing and about about healing our nation, and that's what cannabis really is, is the healing of the nations. You know, it's it's the only thing that I can think of in my life where it brought me into a community where I could... You know, and I, I grew up racist, I have to tell you. I, my dad was very racist. He grew up in the riots in, the, in Georgia, and, uh, you know, he, he uh, affected me with the Mormon doctrine, which is very racist. And so I grew up very racist. And when I was 17 and started really experiencing life, like I said, I moved to Washington. It's when that racism melted away, and I could sit there at a uh, – we used to go to Pain in the Grass. It was a free concert, you know, and all the homeless kids would go there, black, white, Chinese, Jew, Mexican, whatever, we would sit around in the same circle and laugh and joke and pass a joint and heal and, and, and feel that, that love that God gave us, that blessing, that, you know, that, that sacrament, really, that, that God gave us to heal ourselves with. And, and healing isn't just physical. You know, ra radical rust and a lot of these uh, legalization, um, you know, uh, proponents are saying that, you know, medical this and that, it doesn't include... Uh, you know your spirit, or your your soul, or your your you know your uh, your you know your spiritual well-being, or, or your satisfaction in life. I I disagree. I think the stress goes down. I think the animosity decreases. I think that um, you know the the healing comes from inside. And once you feel good inside, you know you, you feel good outside. You feel good about the world around you, and you feel like you want to do something. You're inspired, really, to do something to 
bring that love and that, you know, change to the world. And that's what you know, inspired you me. Know what you just, Ryan, how, how old are you, Ryan? 33. You know what you just described? You just described the love-ins and the war protests and the meetings in the parks. The, uh, the hippies have made the uh, headlines. You know, we created the peace symbol. I, my, my first job, real job, was selling peace symbols to Kmart. You know, what you just described is what we did in the 60s, and we stopped the Vietnam War. The war was wrong, but, you know, God help you if you say anything bad about any of my Vietnam vet brothers. You know? Absolutely not. No not way. Really. And that's not what I'm telling you, Clayton, is, is, you know, I was raised in a military family, too, and that's what prohibition did to me was take away my heritage. I couldn't even join the military like my forefathers and serve my country and, and, and make a difference that way and get educated and be a productive person. I had to go through a different route, and I'm a productive person now after all those years of struggle. But, you know, that that's the thing is, you know, these, the, is the prohibition is, is really carrying America's spirit apart. It's really taking our, you know, our strength, which is us, the people, and dividing us and making that strength a weakness. And and that's, divide, that's my point about... Divide, go ahead. Divide uh, you and know, conquer is the oldest maxim in warfare, and I've been telling my listeners and my audience here, which needs to expand, by the way, folks. Look, I've written books. I've got books that detail all this. I've got... The, the the whole war on marijuana is to keep it illegal because governments are in charge of bringing the drugs in. The, U, the, the CIA runs drugs, the cocaine and the heroin, and you can bet if they're doing that, they're behind the, the marijuana smuggling too. There's no reason to smuggle marijuana over here if you can grow it in your backyard. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, did you serve? Hey, uh, Clay, did you serve in the military? Let me get this in. Hold on just a minute, Ryan. Let me get this in because I've been trying to get this in, and, and then uh, then I lose it. You know, it, it's – if people have asked me, is marijuana, isn't marijuana a gateway drug? And I've said, absolutely. It damn sure is. If you got to go to a drug dealer to get it, they're going to sell you other drugs. They want to sell you other drugs. They want to get you hooked on something because you don't get hooked smoking marijuana. It doesn't happen, folks. It actually liberates you. It sets you free, and you can think for yourself. Go ahead. Any any comments on that? Right, so you're on here, too. Yeah, go ahead, no, I'm, I'm just... I'm no, I, I tell you, I, I'm, I'm just listening to you tonight, Ryan, and you're our guest. Continue with what you're saying. It's beautifully said. Go on. Okay, well, you know, and, and you know, I don't, uh, I don't expect that I've got any influence. I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm nobody, really, in the movement or, or politically. I mean, I'm just some guy that cares, but I care, and I, I just hope more people out there care. That's all I want. You know, I want to inspire people to stand up for their freedom, to know that nobody's going to do it for them. They have to do it themselves. There's nobody that's going to step in and fight for your freedoms for you because, you know, that's, that's, that's how I've always taken life. I've always, I was raised on a farm, and I was always taught to work hard and, and to see the job through and that nobody was going to do my job for me, and it's my job to stand up for my liberty. And I hope that everybody understands that it's their job to stand up for their liberty. Apathy kills just as much as tyranny. I mean, apathy is actually the gateway to tyranny, and that's that's what we're experiencing, is that people got apathetic after the 50s. You know, a lot of our culture, you know, thought, oh, we're the strongest country in the world. Nothing can come against us. We've defeated every battle there is. Okay, 